Hi, my name is James Reinders, and today we're going to talk a little bit about multi-core processors that are very much in the news. I'm going to address a rather simple question that I get asked all the time, which is, are multi-core processors a fad, or are they here to stay? Are multi-core processors something that we need to pay attention to and expect to continue into the future? Well, the answer is yes, multi-core processors are here to stay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why that is, and talk a little bit about a twist that you may or may not have considered that multi-core processors are likely to undergo as time goes on that as programmers will need to pay attention to. So first of all, why multi-core processors? Well, one thing you'll hear a lot about is power. Power is one of the walls that we see. One of the reasons that we've quit increasing the clock rates as fast as we have in the past on microprocessors. And there are two other concerns instruction level parallelism wall and memory wall. So let me talk about each one of these quickly because each one of them is a motivation to move to multi-core. Um, power I think has been in the news more than the rest of them but let me talk about the other two first. So one is instruction level parallelism. Instruction level parallelism is when a microprocessor tries to find ways to execute multiple instructions simultaneously to speed up activity. And as we increase the clock rate on the processor, the processor is able to find more and more instructions to execute at once. The problem is, is that finding instructions that can run in parallel from existing programs is a very difficult task. And increasingly, as the clock rates have been going up, it's been more and more difficult to show the return on instruction level parallelism. So as processor clock rates have gone up, we haven't gotten as large of an increase in performance as we had in the past. And that trend was just going to get worse and worse as we increase clock rate. So instruction level parallelism wall is one challenge we have. Another one is the memory wall. Processor clock rates have been increasing much, much faster for some time than memory um, clock rates. And that trend is just continuing. So again, as we increase the gigahertz rates on microprocessors, we weren't seeing the return as much as we had in the past on performance, causing us to increasingly add larger and larger caches and other things that help alleviate some of the issues, but not all of them with memory. So multi-core actually, again, addresses this issue by slowing the increase in clock rate on the processors so that the problem doesn't get worse. And then power. I think this is the one that I've read the most about that I see in the news the most, which is that power consumption of microprocessors just had to stop increasing. It's a rather interesting observation here. If you take a look at a microprocessor, and let's start with one and assume um, power and performance, and let's just start with a baseline. Let's say we have a processor that has consumes one unit of power and produces one unit of performance. A lot of times people look to... Um, overclock processors and perhaps overclock a processor to get yourself a 13 percent improvement in performance and you can say well how much power does that take to do it well it's quite typical for the amount of uh, power is to increase power maybe about 73 percent simply to get a 13 percent improvement in performance this is taking the same microprocessor and doing nothing with it other than increasing its clock rate Historically, we've done other things with microprocessors over time, but at any given point in time, if you just increase the uh, clock rate, overclocking a processor, the power increase is rather substantial. It doesn't seem to pay off. Now, some people will do this just to get a 13% performance increase, pay 73% penalty in power, but that's not a, um, not a great idea for most of us. What's interesting about this to me is, is that underclocking is a very real possibility. So likewise, if you, wanted, if you were willing to accept a processor that only gave you 87% of the performance of the uh, processor, how much power would that consume? And the answer is roughly half. About 51% in one of the studies we did of power would be needed to run a processor at 87% um, of the performance. Well, this, this opens up a pretty easy suggestion, which is why don't you put two processors together consuming roughly the same power and yet be able to get yourself in a situation where the performance was on the order of 73% uh, additional performance. 
So it's kind of a neat trick to take a processor, lower its clock rate, and get more performance out of it um, than you might expect, and then put two of them together getting roughly the same amount of power consumption but almost twice the performance because you've got two processors. So this is a big motivation behind dual core processors and then quad core processors and so on which is to lower the clock rate a little bit. Now this is one of the tricks. Lowering the clock rate is one of the tricks. Another trick is that as the processor size uh, processor sizes can shrink we can fit the same amount of uh, or twice as many processors in the same area every couple of years as we were able to. That's another trick besides just lowering clock rates. So we're not on a trend to lower clock rates forever, but we do seem to be on a trend to keep using the space for more and more processors because we're able to keep the, um, the power consumption at the same level. Now one twist I wanted to leave you with, since we understand now that these three walls um, motivate multi-core, is all the multi-cores we've seen so far have taken processors um, of roughly today's capabilities and just duplicated them. Dual core or we've seen quad core um, chips where the uh, cores are roughly the same power consistency as today. But one of the things you'll see people ask is, well, what if you took a core of a much smaller capability, maybe go grab an old design from 10 years ago that takes up a lot less area, would it be more beneficial to put a whole lot of those um, on a die, very small ones. Well, it turns out that that has its complications uh, of not performing as well for today's programs. Um, and so people tend to favor today's larger out of order cores. However, um, what if you combine these? What if you had some small ones and some large ones and put them together? This is probably the future of multi-core. Not immediately. We definitely have quad cores in the market. I expect we'll see eight cores, even 16 cores. But somewhere along this continuum, the idea of putting hundreds of smaller cores together is very appealing. I don't think we'll see many processors come out with hundreds of small cores only. But the combination is intriguing. And this is referred to as heterogeneous computing sometimes. And it's a topic that we'll have to talk more about in later series as we talk about programming these because I think it's a very important um, trend to be aware of that this is probably where multi-core will go and we need to be programming for it.